This is not Buenos Aires. This is Montevideo, the capital of Uruguay. More on why we ended up here and what happened then, later. Today's flight review is a special one, for a different reason though. It's special because by showcasing Aerolineas Argentinas, we complete a major step towards our mission goal here at Simply Aviation of making no-nonsense first-hand reviews of as many different airlines as possible. We now have a video about every single airline that is part of one of the three alliances. All 26 Star Alliance carriers, all 13 One World carriers, and all 19 SkyTeam carriers. Today, we're heading down to Buenos Aires on Argentina's flag carrier Aerolineas Argentinas. The airline currently operates a fleet of 80 planes, including eight Airbus A330s, which are used on their long haul routes from Buenos Aires to Madrid, Rome, New York, Miami, and Cancun. And I might spoil too much by saying this, but with the surprisingly great product they have, I would love to see their long haul network grow further. Hello and good afternoon from Madrid. We're on our way to Adolfo Suarez Barajas Airport right now, which is located in the city's north and is very conveniently reachable by train. The airport is connected by Cercanías Lines 10 and 1, Cercanías being Madrid's suburban rail network, similar to what you might call an S-Bahn in Germany, which gets you directly from the airport to the central station, Puerta de Atocha, as well as to Chamartín Station and Nuevos Ministerios, which is Madrid's financial district. The airport is also connected to Metro Line 8, which goes to Nuevos Ministerios as well. Depending on your departure terminal, you might need to take a shuttle bus for the final few hundred meters though. Aerolineas Argentinas uses Terminal 1 at Barajas Airport, where most SkyTeam carriers operate from, including Air Europa, Saudia and Aeromexico, which we've covered on a recent episode on a flight to Madrid as well. Aerolineas Argentinas even has a little ticket office here at the airport. Check-in was quick and easy, and a security fast track for frequent flyers and business class passengers was available as well, which gives us even more time to explore the terminal. And don't say that this rather dull terminal has no surprises hidden, as this huge model of Barajas Airport was tucked away in the corner on the upper floor near the lounge entrance. A bit sad to see something that awesome hidden back here just collecting dust. In the distance, you can already see our ride to Buenos Aires on final approach. We're flying aboard LV GHQ today, a 2016 built Airbus A330-200. Hola. Hola. A ver, ok, gracias. gracias. Aerolineas Argentinas Airbus A330s have 271 seats, 24 in business class, which they call the Club Condor, and 248 in economy class, which features a 242 configuration, the standard on most A330s. Entering through door 2 means you don't get to see the business class cabin, which is only located in the very front of the plane. My seat on this nearly 13 hour flight is 34H, a window seat in the rear section of economy class. In economy class, Aerolineas Argentinas features a rather rare seat model, the Javen C8. The seat's headrests are adjustable, both vertically as well as on the sides. A pillow and blanket are waiting on it already too. The legroom in economy class is okay for someone like me who's 180 centimeters tall, although nothing to write home about. There are standard seat back pockets as well, just like a regular tray table. Right beneath your personal entertainment screen, you will find a USB port and the audio port, and beneath the seats, universal power ports are installed too. 
Now we're getting ready to depart. Coloque en posición vertical el respaldo de su asiento. Trabe la mesa rebatible frente a usted y mantenga abiertas las persianas de las ventanillas para despegues. Right after takeoff, the crew handed out complimentary pairs of headphones to use with the entertainment system. This airplane has an older version of Safran's Rave system installed. A selection of movies and TV shows is available to watch on demand, with the overall variety being a bit limited though. Some music and a moving map are offered as well. This A330 is fairly young, so the cabin has a modern LED mood lighting system installed, which makes overnight flights like this one very cozy. But we get to enjoy some great lighting outside along with dinner now. The appetizer is some kind of fried vegetable patties with tomato salsa served on an impressively large plate, looking fancy. For the main course I went with the vegetarian pasta, which was made with a tomato sauce and olives, as well as a pack of cheese on the side. Aerolineas Argentinas also provides a warm bread roll, and a piece of marble cake was offered for dessert. To drink, I went with a can of Argentinian beer, some Quilmes, and they're not joking around with these half-liter cans. Usually airlines only carry their smaller 0.33 or quarter-liter cans. Overall, a pretty flawless meal service, with the highlights being the very elegantly served appetizer, the huge can of beer, and the warm bread roll, all things that are not all that common in economy class. The main dish itself wasn't all that special, but it was pretty sizable and tasty, leaving me overall very impressed with Aerolineas Argentinas catering. After the meal, the crew offered tea and coffee, where I usually go with a cup of tea to settle down for the night. In the rear galley, beverages and a selection of snacks was on offer throughout the flight, like varieties of nuts and granola bars. Here I particularly appreciate how comparably healthy this snack selection is. By the way, Wi-Fi is not available on this plane.
around an hour and a half before landing, breakfast was served. This meal included a croissant, a chocolate chip muffin, a cup of Greek yogurt, as well as beverages of your choice, with my standard breakfast combo being a cup of coffee and some orange juice. For the length of this flight, you could make an argument that a second hot meal would be appropriate, but given the super early arrival time of 4.10 am, I personally don't mind this lighter meal. What I would have appreciated though is if the yogurt had some kind of flavor, strawberry or vanilla or something, but that's really just personal preference. Now it's time to start our descent into Buenos Aires. And just look at this view over the city. This is my first time in Buenos Aires and ain't that the perfect introduction to the city. Down there you can already see Ezeiza Airports, one of the three airports in a Greater Buenos Aires area. Ezeiza is the one serving most international flights and all long-haul flights. The other large airport is Buenos Aires Aeropark, which is named after Jorge Newberry, an Argentinian aviator who played a major role in the beginnings of South American aviation in the early 20th century and worked closely with Brazilian aviator Alberto Santos Dumont, after whom Rio de Janeiro's Santos Dumont Airport is named. Buenos Aires Aeropark handles most domestic flights and some international ones to major cities in South America, as this airport is the closest to the city center. And then there's Buenos Aires El Palomar Airport, which only ever served a few low-cost carriers and hasn't been operating since the beginning of the pandemic. With entering our fourth or fifth lap above the airport, I started to grow increasingly suspicious over what was going on. My initial thought was that maybe the airport wasn't open yet, something that isn't all that uncommon in Europe where strict nighttime flight bans exist at various major hubs, but usually the pilots would have delayed the departure to avoid circling above the airport. I have actually experienced and covered this kind of delay on my British Airways Airbus A380 flight from Hong Kong to London back in 2018, where the departure was pushed back by an hour and a half simply because Heathrow Airport wouldn't have been open by the time we arrived. But the cockpit crew lifted the secret shortly after, telling us that due to ground fog we weren't able to land in Buenos Aires. I was curious about how that's possible to divert due to fog, while at the same time clearly being able to see the airport, and I asked two friends of mine who are pilots. What they told me is that fog can be very tricky. Depending on the type, you might be able to see through it when you look at it from above, but can't if you look at it from a different angle, like when you're approaching. Looking back at the weather data from this day shows a runway visual range of just 125 meters, while a CAT-3 assisted landing requires at least 175 meters at the Zeza airport. So Montevideo, here we come, my first time to Uruguay as well. After a brief 30 minute flight, we landed at Montevideo's Carrasco International Airport, where you could already see the Aerolineas Argentinas flight coming in from Miami parked in the distance. We were allowed to get up during the layover here, use the restrooms, get drinks and snacks, but the only passengers allowed to leave the plane were the ones who had connecting flights to Montevideo. Convenient situation for them, although they couldn't get their bags, which won't be unloaded until we arrive in Buenos Aires. During our layover here, the plane was refueled, and multiple other flights destined for Buenos Aires landed, including flights of Iberia, Air Europa, United, and others of Aerolineas Argentinas. May I have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. We are restarting our flight AR 1133. To Ministry of Pistarini's airport, the estimated flight time is 30 minutes. Please fasten your seatbelts, throw your phone and cables, and put the bag over your seat in an upright position. 
window shade that be opened for takeoff. Thank you. Luckily, when the weather permitted us to fly to Buenos Aires, the aircraft departed in a first-in, first-out order, meaning that we were the second plane allowed to leave and didn't have to spend more time here in Montevideo. In total, between landing and takeoff, we spent around four hours on the ground here in Montevideo. And after another 30 minute flight, we finally landed here at Ezeiza International Airport. So, after spending almost 18 hours on this A330, I can tell you, it's not bad at all. Aerolineas Argentinas has fabulous crews, good in-flight food, and this A330 has a modern economy class cabin, so all in all, I wouldn't hesitate to choose them again on a trip to Argentina. With that, thank you very much for watching and coming along today. Special thanks to all of these fantastic aviation enthusiasts who directly support our mission to create first-hand reviews of as many airlines as possible by being channel supporters. If you also want to help us out and become a sponsor, and with that, join our exclusive Discord community and get some other perks as well, take a look at our Members tab right here on YouTube. The lowest tier starts at just 24 euros per year, that's just 2 euros per month. Thanks again for watching and have a great rest of your day.